remember the first time I was introduced to the telephone game. It was way back in, uh, in fifth grade, and I walk into the classroom, and the teacher had set up all the chairs in a circle. The message gets to me, and I listen to it, and then I share it with the kid next to me. It finishes out the rest of the circle, and the last kid, he stands up. This poor kid, he, uh, he stands up, and he shares a message, and everybody starts laughing. I mean, the message was completely wrong. It wasn't even close. And I remember thinking to myself, how is it possible that in such a short distance, the message was changed that dramatically? It wasn't just different than the message that the first kid had heard. It was different than the message that I had heard. And there was only like five kids between me and the last kid in the circle. A number of years went by, and I graduated high school. I went off to college, and I started to go work for this company. And this was the second time that I came into contact with the telephone game. The only difference was, was that the message that was about to be lost is the most important message that we have to share. And that's who we are, why we do what we do, and how we do it. You see, I truly believe that you can embrace change, that you can embrace new ideas and new perspectives, but that you don't have to sacrifice who you are. You don't have to sacrifice the foundations of what originally made you successful. So this company, like I said, they were, they were doing things right. I mean, they were doing things. They had good products, they had good services, and good ideas. And the employees, they felt empowered, felt engaged, they felt involved. They felt like they were part of the direction of the organization. And as a result of these two things, you had the customers who they just couldn't say enough good things about the organization. They were telling their family members and their friends about all the great things that they were doing. And so if you're this organization, the last thing that you would want to do is to change that, to become different than what originally made you successful. But that's exactly what happened. And it wasn't done intentionally. But you see, as the organization started to it started to create these new layers and these new positions. And as much as you'd like to fill these positions internally, it's not always possible. So what they do is they go outside of the organization and they bring in people who have new ideas, new perspectives, different views. And this is an exciting time. And what the organization was hoping was that these people were going to walk into the organization and they were going to automatically align with the direction. That they were going to complement the organization in the, in the direction that they were headed in. That they weren't just going to get over the, uh, the challenge of growth, but they were going to continue to be successful. But it doesn't always work out that way. You see, you can hope that that's going to happen. But you know what they say about hope. You know, you can lean on a shovel and you can hope for a hole. But it's not going to happen. <laughs> I mean, at, at some point in time, you have to decide to put in work. And this organization, they hadn't taken the time to define who they were, what was important to them, and what made them unique. And without even noticing it, they had just become the newest contestant on the telephone game. So they would start communicating, they would send stuff out, and they would go through all these new channels, these new layers, and it would come out the other side looking different, completely different than they had originally intended. And like I had said, you know, if, if you're this organization that's doing things right, the last thing that you would want to do is to change from what originally made you successful. And yet that's exactly what was happening. So the organization's watching this, and they're, they're seeing it come out the other end, and they're just like me when I was in fifth grade, and I'm thinking, somebody's got to be changing this message on purpose. Somebody's got to, one, one of these new people that just came to the organization, they got to wake up in the morning and be thinking to themselves, I can't wait to get into work so that I can make changes for no reason. Just, <laughs> you know, and you're probably laughing because you're thinking about somebody who's just like this if you're going through growth. They have to come into work with the idea that they're just going to make change for no reason. And so the organization's standing here, and they're watching this happen. But that's not the reality. That's not why those people are making those decisions. You see, they came into an environment that wasn't defined, and it wasn't clear the direction of the organization. So they take whatever communication is there, and then they start to make assumptions. They start to fill in the blanks based off of their ideas and their perspectives, and it comes out the other end looking completely dumb. This was that they were going to stop this from happening. They were going to slow this change that they were seeing. And they were going to do it by pulling back the ability for individuals to be able to make change, for them to be able to make those decisions and to be able to make the organization look different. So they pulled back that authority. Now, you've got to remember, I'm a new person in this company, and I'm watching this happen, and I'm just seeing everything. And now the employees, they're starting to feel less empowered, less engaged, less like they're going in the direction, and now they feel like they're um, just an order taker, just an employee. They no longer feel empowered. And as a result of this, the customers, they're still talking about the business. 
they're just saying something a little bit different. They're starting to say things like, they've grown too big, they're different than they used to be, they're not who they, used, they once were. And the employees, I heard them saying comments like, we become too centralized, we become too corporate. You may have heard these kind of phrases before. And you've got to remember back that, you know, this is exactly what the organization was trying to prevent from happening. By trying, to, by trying to pull back that authority so that they didn't change from what originally made them successful, they've actually accelerated it. And the organization had become something completely different than what, origin, than what it originally was. And so then they start to slow, and they start to stall. And then the worst thing possible happens, at least what I think is the worst thing possible, and that's that they become average. They become just like everybody else. There's nothing different between them or their competitors anymore. They've lost touch with what originally made them successful. You know, I, I really don't believe that it has to be this way. And I got some advice from one of the most unlikely of places. It was a Saturday morning, and um, I'm sitting on the couch, and I got my four-year-old on one side and my one-year-old on the other side. And for those of you who are parents, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's Saturday morning cartoon time. It's time to zone out. It's time to forget about all the things that were going on throughout the week. So we're sitting there and we're watching Finding Nemo. For those of you who have seen the movie, there's a fish that, her name is Dory, and Dory's a really forgetful fish. And we all know people who are just like Dory, they tend to drive you a little crazy. And so they're going along in the movie, and it comes to a part where they find a pair of goggles. And written on that pair of goggles is an address. And the only fish that gets a chance to read that address is Dory, the forgetful fish. But Dory does something different. She doesn't forget this time. Not only does she remember that address, but she starts to share it over and over and over. And you're probably thinking of it right now. It's P. Sherman, 42, <laughs> East Wallaby Way, Sydney. <laughs> I mean, and you know, the, the reason why you remember it is because it was a very important message. And Dory did exactly what organizations need to do, and that's that she took her very important message and she started to share it over and over and over. We have to identify what's important to us, what makes us different, what makes us unique. And we have to communicate it so that we can not only be successful today, but we can continue to be successful tomorrow as we start to grow. About six months ago, I moved here to Reno from southwest Michigan. And what I've found since, since arriving here is that this is a really great place to raise a family. It's a great place to live. It's a great place to work. And the secret's out. I mean, every single week, I'm meeting new people who are coming from different areas, new businesses that are moving here and calling this place home. And what I found is, is that this community embraces new ideas. I mean, they embrace new visions, you know, new type of, you know, everything that's new. But they do it without sacrificing who they are, where they've come from, come from, what originally made them unique. And that's the difference that if you are growing and you're finding this success, that you'll have new people come into your organization, and you no longer have to hope that they're going to see the direction of the organization. You don't have to hope that they're going to align with you. They walk in and the culture is evident. And they find themselves still with new ideas, still with their new perspectives, but now they're aligning their decisions with the organization. And now you can be successful without sacrificing who you are. You see, when it all boils down to it, I really do care about the customers. I want them to have a unique experience. I want it to be something that's genuine. I want it to be something that's unique. You know, when I think about people who are like Dory, I think about uh, Tom's Shoes and their one-for-one -one program. And many of you are familiar with it. For every pair of shoes you buy, they give a pair of shoes to a child in need. And they do such a good job of communicating it and being consistent that they, it doesn't just stay within the organization. It goes all the way out to the customers where they're even they're telling their family members and friends about it. I see this firsthand. I'll be at the house and a new pair of shoes will arrive at the house and my wife is standing right next to me reminding me about the mission of Tom's Shoes. <laughs> <laughs> it gets me every time. I'm like, maybe you should get another pair. <laughs> but you know, th this is what the customers are looking for. They're looking for a relationship, something that's unique, something that they really feel that they're connected with. I care about that experience. And I care about the business. Because you can strip away the success that they're having. You can strip away that growth. And you get all the way back to the foundation of who they are. And at that foundation, you're going to find a passion and a purpose. And I don't want to see them lose that. I want to see them continue to be successful and to build on that, to embrace that change without sacrificing who they are. And while I'm passionate about customers and I'm passionate about the business, uh, you know, I'm extremely passionate about the people because they're the ones that sacrifice time from their family members and their friends and they come in and they don't do it just so they can go to a job. 
I truly believe that if you empower them, that if you engage them, that if you communicate to them the direction of the organization, that they're going to be the hinge, they're going to be the connection between who you are and the connection to your customers, and that you're going to continue to find success. My hope is, there's hope again, <laughs> my hope is, is that you know, we, can, we can be more like Dory. We can identify what's important to us, and that we can share it openly, every opportunity that we get, because it's what makes us unique. And that we can not only be successful today, but that we can continue to be successful tomorrow. And once and for all, we can opt out of the telephone game. Thank you. Thank you.